The Messenger. I stood on the sidewalk and stared at the house for a few minutes before approaching the door. I hate this part. I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people in general, let alone complete strangers. It's awkward, strange, and makes me anxious. The people usually think I have some kind of angle or that this is a con job of some sort. It's not. I took a few deep breaths, wiped my sweaty palms off of my jeans, and knocked on the door. A short woman in her late forties answered. She had more gray hair than one might expect from a woman of such an age. Her face housed many stress wrinkles, especially around her eyes and forehead. She held a polite smile, but her eyes displayed confusion. Yes? Can I help you? She held the door only partially open in case she needed to close it on me quickly. She was being cautious. I don't blame her. I'm a 30-year-old man with broad shoulders and eyes that some have described as beady. I always try to hold a cheerful smile in these situations to put the other person at ease, but it's not authentic and many people can sense that. Are you Margaret? Her brow crinkled and the confusion in her eyes swelled. Who are you? My name is Tim. I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am, but I knew David. Can we talk? This was the part where people usually did one of three things. They'd welcome me with open arms, tell me to get the hell off their property, or start asking questions. What do you want? Questions. Very common. I guess I want some... closure. My smile dropped and sadness overtook my expression. This got me in the front door. It normally did. The woman led me to her living room. It was a cozy room decorated with elegant antiques. She asked me if I would like some coffee or tea. I told her water would be preferred. I got nervous in these uncomfortable situations and my mouth would get bone dry. After handing me a bottle of spring water, we sat down in the charming room and she was the one that got the ball rolling. Were you friends with David? I took a moment. This was a combination of theater for Margaret's benefit, but also to make sure I got my wording correct. No, I wasn't. Uh, quite the opposite, in fact. I don't like him a bit. As a matter of fact, I think he's a jerk. I half expected Margaret to be angry by this remark. After all, it was her only son I was speaking of. But this wasn't the case. Her telling eyes expressed empathy. She knew as I did that her son was not a good person. What can I do for you, Tim? I smiled at her. The time had come for honesty. I must admit that I misled you with something I said earlier. Oh? I told you that I knew David. The fact is that I know David. She shook her head as she spoke. I'm sorry, I don't understand. David speaks to me from the dead. And this was the part where people got furious. Margaret was no different. She stood up and pointed to the front door. Get out of my house! How dare you try to swindle a grieving mother? You're not grieving. You killed him. She froze. Her bottom lip began to quiver and tears filled her honest eyes. Within a few seconds she collapsed into a chair and buried her face in her hands. She collected herself quickly and looked up at me. Nobody could have known that. David didn't even know that. I nodded. She was correct. David's cause of death was determined to be cardiac arrest. Uncommon for a man of 29, but not unheard of. No autopsy was performed. That's why they didn't find the poison. David was evil. 
I knew it from the day he was born. She leaned her face in close to me. Look into my eyes. Do you see evil? I shook my head for there was nothing malevolent about this woman. David's eyes were always lacking something. There was something dead behind them even as a child. We couldn't have pets. David always killed them. I should have done something then, but I didn't. I'll always regret that. She rose up, wiped the tears from her eyes, and spoke without remorse. I was supposed to be away on vacation, but my flight was canceled. The next available flight was the following afternoon, so I returned home. Obviously, David wasn't expecting me. I found him burying the bodies of two young girls in our cellar. Margaret cleared her throat to make sure her following statement was loud and clear. My son was a serial killer. There are over 30 bodies of young girls in the cellar, some as young as seven years old. She paused and took a few more breaths to calm herself. He needed to be stopped. I nodded, for she was correct. Hell, I wanted to stand up and applaud. This was a brave woman, a good woman, a woman who saved countless lives. I'm not sorry for what I did, but David is my son, and I'll always love him. Please tell him that. I smiled at her. He knows. I ran the straight razor across her throat swiftly. He doesn't care. Margaret bled out and died before she fully understood what happened. That was the most I was able to do for her. The dead have been able to communicate with me for as long as I can remember. It's a blessing, but on days like this one it can feel like a curse. David was a psychopathic jackass who had been pestering me for weeks to confront his mother on his behalf. He hadn't moved on to the true afterlife yet. If he had, he would have shed his insane side and found redemption. I tried to explain that to him, but he was having none of it. He wanted to stay earthbound and exact revenge on his mother. Unbeknownst to David, he's not in control like he was prior to his death. When he reunites with his mother, he'll find that out. His mother was a good soul and will be much stronger than him. She'll be able to grab him by the proverbial ear and drag him to where he needs to be. He'll be punished, but also enlightened. This wasn't the first person I had to kill and likely won't be the last, but there's always a good reason behind it all, whether I'm fully aware of it or not. It's time for me to go now. A messenger's work is never done.